Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. Here today, I wanna to talk about Corsair stock with you guys. There have been a lot of people in the comment section asking me to review this stock. So in this video, I'm gonna take a look at the potential opportunity that Corsair uh, kind of provides to us as investors over the next five years. So if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. And if you have any other companies you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's get into it. First and foremost, we need to understand that Corsair is a company that competes in the gaming industry. So they make a variety of different, uh, different products, uh, such as different uh, PC components and headsets and microphones and gaming uh, keyboards, things along those lines. That is the industry that Corsair is in. If you want a deeper look into exactly what the Corsair products are, you can go to any Best Buy, they're in all of them. You can go to the Corsair website and really d uh, dive deep into the different products that they offer. But essentially, they are a large part of the global gaming industry. And if we take a look at this website here, we'll see the gaming industry as a whole is currently worth roughly $168 billion, at least in 2020. It's a huge industry and not just that, you know, a lot of people are thinking that, you know, going forwards after this pandemic, we're going to see a big decline in the gaming uh, compared to 2020. In my opinion, that's just not going to happen. And according to uh, obviously the statistic here, we're expecting a growth rate in the gaming industry of right around 9.25% compounded leading into 2026 to eventually become a $287 billion industry. So Corsair being a company, obviously uh, really competing in this industry and having a large market share in it will most likely uh, grow at least parallel with the industry. So in my opinion, we have a situation with Corsair where they have the tailwind of not just their own growth going forward forwards and new product expansion, but growth in the industry as a whole as the gaming industry is still very young and I expect it to expand significantly going forwards and a company like Corsair is at the forefront of benefiting from this. Now, when we look at the valuation of the stock right now, I mean, you know, I just want to start off with this before we get into any projections five years out. It's currently trading at a forward PE of 15.7. That is ridiculous. You know, you have a lot of value stocks out there that don't really grow revenues that much. They're trading in the price to earnings uh, ratio range of in and around 15, 20, maybe 25. That's the ratio that generally value stocks tend to trade at. And we have a company like Corsair, which is growing revenues year in and year out at a pretty significant pace and is trading at the same valuation of a lot of value stocks. And when we look at a company like Logitech, which is uh, you know one we're gonna really use as a benchmark of a potential valuation for Corsair, they're currently trading in a price to earnings ratio range of in and around 20 using their trailing and forward price to earnings ratio. So you have a company that, you know, is obviously much smaller with Corsair and a lot more opportunity over the next, um, you know, five, 10 years here uh, from a growth standpoint, trading at a much cheaper valuation than Logitech. And I, I think this is one of the things that I really want to start off with because just looking at these two companies, and their current valuations really makes your head scratch as to why Corsair is trading at such a cheap valuation. And I, I think it really goes back to my original point that people expect the gaming industry to decline over time, which is you know potentially why they're baking in this lower multiple. And obviously Corsair is a company growing revenue significantly year in and year out. And we can expect at least eight to 10% growth uh, uh, every single year, essentially leading up to 2025, in my personal opinion. So when we look at their most recent quarterly report here, this is Q1, they just went ahead and raised their revenue guidance for 2021 to 1.9 to 2.1 billion dollars. That's really big from an investor's point of view and really uh, further signals the growth and the strength of the global gaming industry as a whole. They also raised their total operating income and their adjusted EBITDA. Now, the first thing I really want to point at is the profitability of this business. What is a reasonable net income range that we can expect? from Corsair moving forwards. In this situation, they're expecting in and around $1.9 to $2.1 billion in revenue for 2021. What they're also expecting is operating income. So that's after, you know, uh, advertising and general and administrative expenses. They expect to have essentially a profit of right around $235 to $255 million. From that, you obviously have to deduct taxes and you get net income. 
So looking at this currently, we're in a situation where a company like Corsair is essentially having 10% of their total revenue going down to the bottom line. And that is important because that's the number we're going to use. We have a situation where Corsair is currently taking in and around 10% of their revenue down to the bottom line. And if we expect that going forwards, we can get some pretty accurate numbers, which is what we're going to do here next. What I have here is $2.1 billion in revenue for full year 2021. I expect this to happen. You know, they just raised revenue guidance and I don't think a company would give the potential of $2.1 billion in revenue if they didn't fully expect it to happen. So I'm gonna use a 2.1 billion. If that does seem a little bit too optimistic, I'm using a little bit of a lower uh, kind of revenue growth range. And we'll talk about that in a second. I'm expecting 8% growth every single year moving up till 2025. This is the number that I'm expecting. Analysts are expecting around 7% growth next year. We'll see what they expect uh, moving forwards. The gaming industry is expected, again, to increase by around nine to 10% every year over the next five years. So this may very well be conservative, but again, I wanna find that benchmark for a company like Corsair, that worst case scenario, that based case. And if we make money there, I, I think it really does signal a potential uh, phenomenal opportunity moving forwards. And you know, we also just found out that the net income that the company is producing is also right around 10%. So, you know, we get a situation where by 2025, we can expect a company like Corsair to be generating around $285 million in total net income on a yearly basis. Now we can use this number and play around. The current valuation of Corsair using their most recent share price and their fully diluted share count is right around $2.9 billion. So using 2025 numbers, this company is currently trading at a price to earnings ratio, or I'd say a five year forward price to earnings ratio of right around 10. That is ridiculously cheap. There aren't many companies out there trading at a price to earnings ratio of 10. And if they are, they're generally companies that profits tend to fluctuate significantly, potentially like a vaccine company like Moderna or, a, you know, potential patent companies or, th or things like that. But, you know, a forward PE of 10 is absolutely ridiculous, which, you know, kind of sends a benchmark of it's almost impossible to lose money with Corsair over the next five years here based off of their current valuation. Now, what we're going to do, we have these numbers here. I'm going to take a company, uh, Logitech. Logitech is another company in the gaming space, and they've been around rather for a while. And we have a lot of data for them over the past five years. We've had Logitech trading in the price to earnings ratio range of anywhere from 20 to roughly 30. That's what we've had. Some, you know, it went a little bit lower at times. It went a little bit higher at times, but generally speaking, excluding the crash that we had in March, 20 to 30 is generally the range of Logitech. Corsair is a company that recently went public, so we don't have much data going back with Corsair, but we can use this Logitech data. Obviously, Logitech is now a much bigger company with a significantly less growth than a company like Corsair to come up with a potential valuation for the company. So what we're going to do, we have these numbers here. We can assume different price to earnings ratios and assume that these different PEs will give us potentially a different rate of return on again that more bare, that more conservative case of a PE ratio of 20, which is again, kind of what Logitech is trading at right now, we get a share price of over $60 and essentially a double up over the next five years. I really think that a double up is a phenomenal investment and uh, is generally what you want at the very least when investing in any company. And having that there is absolutely phenomenal as this is using, again, a very conservative growth rate with a company like Corsair. It's using that net income margin that doesn't really expect much more expansion over the next five years. It's expecting a PE ratio right in line with Logitech, despite a company like Corsair having more growth going forwards, you have all of those conservative cases baked into a share price that is still a double up from what we have here today. And I think that again, signals the undervalued uh, kind of nature of a company like Corsair due to the fear of them shrinking revenues, which, you know, again, they won't. This is a company growing revenue significantly and is expecting to expand into many different uh, sectors of the gaming industry over the next few years. Now, next here, this is more of a base case, uh, assuming a PE ratio of 25. And again, I'm going to go back to the chart here just to show you Logitech back in 2019 was trading at a PE ratio of 25. 
So again, this is not that hard to assume, guys. A, a PE ratio of 25 could very well happen with uh, Corsair here, and that would lead to a share price increase of 150% in and around $78 per share. Now, um, this is kind of my bull case. This is the next one. At a PE ratio of 30, which again, Logitech, they trade at a PE ratio of 30. It wouldn't be unexpected for a company like Corsair to be trading at where potentially something like a Logitech has been trading at in prior years. So given this, this is again more of a bull case, potentially Wall Street shifts its narrative toward Corsair and potentially they start picking up that revenue growth and uh, essentially consistently beat Wall Street expectations, which they have been in their prior two earnings reports. But again, a P ratio of 30 could assume a 3x in share price. Phenomenal. And if we assume a P.E. ratio of 35, which in my opinion would happen if Wall Street assumes that, you know, Corsair is a company that is much smaller than Logitech. And, uh, you know, given that they have a much greater pathway of growth moving forwards as they are a much smaller company and it's easier for them to double their revenue than potentially something like a Logitech because of their size. So assuming potentially a P.E. ratio of 35, we get an increase in share price by right around 3.5x, over $100 per share. That is the opportunity I see with Corsair stock, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I just wanted to make this video uh, to really kind of give you a sense of what Corsair is as a company and the opportunity it uh, kind of presents as a, as a stock. One of the great things about Corsair is that you know, you're not gonna have much volatility with this stock because they're already trading so dang cheap at a PE ratio of 10 using 2025 numbers. So given that you have a company that is already trading at such a low valuation, where even if we have a pullback overall in the stock market, we can't really expect a company like Corsair to be, uh, you know, to drop that significantly. I and mean, we look at the share price here as a whole, we've had a situation over the past couple of months where the market has taken an absolute beating. And what have we had happen at the same time? Corsair stock stabilized. I don't see it going much lower from here from a chart perspective. Uh, you know, it's really stabilized around this $30 range over the past couple of months. And I, I think it is a phenomenal entry point. I'm obviously not a financial advisor. I can't tell you to buy or sell a stock, but Corsair is a company with opportunity. And if you have any other perspective or uh, opinions on my different price targets and other things along those lines, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.